Um, I want to read this section uh, that pertains to what uh, my mom was just talking about. I become one of the wives of the communist men of 444 Central Park West. The men were the ones with the real identities. The wives were in the shadows politically, standing behind their husbands. As, Car as Karen Morley one once whispered to me, we're pillow reds. Women who happened to fall in love with a guy who happened to be a communist. The girls were hooked by attraction, not politics. I wasn't aware I'd become one of the wives, pathetically searching my husband's face for approval, alienating him in the process. I don't think the word love applies. I wanted him. I yearned for his approval very much, too much. Boringly, I'm sure. He gave me a failing mark in everything but being a satisfactory mother. In almost everything else, he gritted his teeth and went behind his eyes. And I was dwindling. I had lost my luster, gotten shabby in a kind of land of the formerly wanted, now forgotten, sinking into married quicksand. I had no tools to reach him and slowly fell inside myself. Not when I talked, not when I thought. Normalcy returned, need returned, and passion. In the apartment, I moved in slow motion. Outside was life and breath, in acting, in teaching, in learning to fight the enemy. There I found my passion and family. In every theater I found family. Actors are always there for each other, and my students, and my ragtag fighting friends in Equity and AFTRA. But at home, someone was winding the key in my back, and I went through my days and nights on automatic, watching myself floating over myself. I didn't feel. We live with our mirrors. The more I lost my originality, my funny, comedic, outrageous side, the more I tried to fit into my idea of what Arnie wanted, the more I lost him, and the more I lost myself. This isn't something I knew. It's what I'm discovering as I write. And I, I love that because, I mean, it, I love the writing, and, and, but, but what I love is that, is that you got to that as you were writing it. It yes. wasn't like you hadn't pre-thought it out. You know, that it really came out of the process. And I'm wondering <coughs> about the things you discovered about yourself as you wrote. Um, what else did you discover? Well, also, and hold it carefully, hold it, Arthur and, said, and like here. Your mouth, right? Here and, yeah, don't hold it. <laughs> <laughs> hold it up here, yeah, and close. Not there. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know what, what, what uh, it's everything, everything is discovered. You know, I, I wrote uh, with ink on, on school paths, you know, like I did when I was a kid, so that it came out like a hit. And I, and I had a, a friend who translated it and put it on the computer, but it came out like I was in grade school. And, uh, and so everything was a discovery. What about, you You had written in the book about discovering, um, you, you talked a little bit, you, you had done a movie with Bruce Lewis that you talked about in the book, and you talked about <laughs> discovering your own, your own responsibility in the, in the demise of that relationship in that movie. <laughs> this, was, this was such a calamity, and it's, it was the end of the book. Uh, when I was directing, and um, and my husband Joe Fioretti, Joey, my husband Joey, uh, the tomato of this book, uh, uh, was producing, and and I was directing. We had a company, and he had found a great script. He had taken it to Bruce Willis, who was a big star, and formerly her boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Took her to the Tonys when she won. <laughs> um, that's not why I brought this up. <laughs> We're keeping that about you. <laughs> it was a disaster. I don't want to even, you know, I don't want to even. But you were talking about in the book how you discovered about yourself your own responsibilities and your own behaviors 
about working. That's what I, you know, was was leading you to. Well, I, I, I you know. My husband was the producer. If he had gone to another director, I would have had a divorce. I, I mean, I was the director. He had to have me as a director. And I was not up to it. I, 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 I don't like leading men. I don't like, you know, screen guys. I don't like, uh, no, there's a, you know, there's not a seriousness about them. I, I've worked with a lot of people in documentaries and in films, and when they're actors, uh, they excite me, they thrill me. But when they're like, you know, oh, I'm going to, you know, do the band tonight, I'm going to do this, I'm not showing up for this, you know, is my hair okay? Um, <laughs> you know, I, I lose the pump, I lose the interest, I lose the passion. And so, and so it, was, it was just a disaster, and it was in Joey's hometown, where he was showing off at, and rightly so, on producing this movie with a movie star. And, and it was a disaster, and, and he fired us. And, and so, um, realizing that I was really responsible, that another director could have known how to schmeckle up to him, and <laughs> you know, that, that the guys know how to do that, and I didn't. And, and so, it, and I said that to Joey recently. I said, you know, this, you've never gotten over this, and it's really my fault. It just, but I discovered that in the, the writing of it. You know, I always said, oh, that Bruce Willis, it wasn't. It's it, amazing. You know, I mean, it, I think that's amazing yeah. to write yourself into your self truth. Like, yeah. Because just, you know. I'll ask you to tell about Warren Beatty, I should. Oh, uh, Frank wants to know if you slept with Warren Beatty. <laughs> <laughs> But in line with what you were just talking about, your experience with Warren Beatty. And, you know. Well, here's the dish. <laughs> <laughs> of course not. Girl. <laughs> 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 